Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. Well, good day to you, brothers and sisters. Going to show you something cool as always. In this lesson, we're going to take a pretty detailed look at the giants of the Bible. Were there really um, giants in the land as, as you read? Giants. How tall were they? And what in the world relationship do they have to the fallen angels, if any? Did fallen angels ever mate with human women? What were their offspring like? Um, you know, you read stuff and you watch stuff on YouTube and you got to be careful. And, and you see a lot of interest in this subject. Giants, Nephilim, fallen angels, children. How much of this stuff is really true? So to find out, you got to do a detailed study and kind of... Don't pay attention to what you've seen and what you've heard. Do the research yourself. So that's what I did. I wanted to know once and for all how much of this stuff you hear and see is actually in the Holy Bible. And uh, how much is true. And what does it have to do with Judgment Day when Jesus Christ of Nazareth appears in power and great glory at the seventh bowl battle of the great day of God Almighty and cleanses the earth and cast out all that offends prior to um, bringing in the kingdom of God, if you will, during the thousand year reign called the millennium. How much of all this is true and how does it relate to the, um, the casting out of all who offend? The marked perjurers, the rebels, the resistors. Uh, there's many names for these marked ones. And are they descendants of the fallen angels? Is there any truth to any of that? Let's find out. So what you see before you is an Old Testament map of Israel. We'll come back to this. Um, the actual wine, the main wine press and the battle uh, around the hill of Nazareth called the Battle of the Great Day of God Almighty in the Valley of Armageddon. You see it there before you. And this region of mountains east of the Sea of Galilee called Bashan, uh, where the bulls of Bashan uh, will gather on the left hand of Jesus and his father as they're hovering over the wedding hall in their cherub, pointing southward towards Jerusalem and Bethlehem during the wedding, and to his left hand, when he's facing south, will be Bashan. And that's the bulls of Bashan sacrifice alluded to in 1 Kings 18. This great wine press around the hill of Nazareth. Hallelujah. But let's get into the study of this lesson by opening up BibleGateway.com. Let's do a search of the word giants and see what comes up. Well, interestingly enough, uh, the first search result is in the chapter number six interesting of the book of Genesis what does it say there were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children they being the daughters of men bore children to them so here we go children are being born to uh, a group of something called the sons of God and producing children and the Bible refers to the children as giants and it also goes on to say in verse 4 those were the mighty men who were of old the men of renown uh, which doesn't necessarily mean a, a good thing it just means that they were uh, stories were made up of them around the campfires you know, they really didn't have a lot of entertainment back in those days, so they sat around and told stories of these giants who uh, can kill many, many, many men. Uh, now, they were large in size, but they were mortals. Okay? So whoever the sons of God were who had sex with human women produced children. Now, these are children. These are not immortal children. These are mor mortal children. These are human beings, 100% mortal. But they're called giants. They're called men of renown. 
but their fathers, biological fathers, were whoever the sons of God are. In this lesson, we're going to find out, are those fallen angels, are those the uh, uh, just simply the human mortals, descendants of the 12 tribes? Of course, we're back in Genesis 6 now. Be, you know, that should give you a little clue right there. Genesis 6. You know, this is prior to Abraham. Okay, this is back uh, in the days of Noah. All right, and we're talking 4,000 B.C. We're not talking about the descendants of the 12 tribes, you know, or even the time of uh, Moses, 1400 B.C. We're talking more like 4,000 B.C., you know. So, in fact, the flood came after this. Did you hear what I said? The flood came after this. I wonder if this played a part. In the fact that the earth and mankind and all flesh were so evil. I wonder if that played a part. But uh, is does that mean that these are fallen angels? Well, let's keep studying. Let's see what we come up with. Numbers 13 verse 33. There we saw the giants, the, des the descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. So the descendants of the giants, but the giants are mortals, but they are tall, they are large, they are fierce, and their fathers are the original father in their seed line, if you will, is someone called the sons of God. But we haven't determined yet whether that's mortal or immortal. Okay. But that shows you compared to a normal human. All right. These giants were very, very tall to the point where uh, an average human looks like a grasshopper almost. That's an exaggeration. But these giants were tall. Again, this is... Uh, up here in Genesis 6 is pre-flood when the actual birth of the first generation of these children occurred. Deuteronomy 2.11 they were also regarded as giants like the Anakim. See right here? Anak, Anakim you know descendants of Anak came from the giants like the Anakim but the Moabites called them Emim. And the Moabites are the people uh, in the area of the Middle East in what we would call the northern half of the country of Jordan, on the east side of the Jordan River. The Moabites called them Emim. Deuteronomy 2.20, that was also regarded as a land of giants. Giants formerly dwelt there, but the Ammonites called them Zamzumin. Emim, here's the Mim, here's the Mim, Emim or Zamzumim, descendants of the giants who are the children of the sons of God. We still have to determine who that is, and we will in this lesson. Okay, some more uh, giant seed lines are being born and being born another generation another generation the Deuteronomy 3 verse 11 says for only Og king of Bashan and I showed you the region of Bashan on the map remember right in this area you know kind of like northern Jordan uh, this is like southern Golan Heights area Here's the Golan, all the way up to Mount Hermon. Here's Damascus, Syria. Of course, this is Lebanon up here. Um, yeah, you could say uh, kind of like a Golan Heights, Southern Golan Heights, Jordan, border, that area. All right, Og of Bashan. Now, isn't it interesting that Og of Bashan sounds very similar to Gog? Gog is a name given to the final Antichrist that has not come yet, 
who will appear during the 70th week of Daniel, our future. And during the last seven years of the age prior to the appearing of Jesus Christ, there will be uh, a leader of the king of Assyria and the Assyrian alliance, who's the Bible refers to in Ezekiel 38 and 39 as Gog, G-O-G. And the book of Nahum, chapter 1, says that this wicked prince, who Israel shall accept for a time, who the Bible in some places refers to as Gog, from Magog, Nahum chapter 1 tells us exactly what city he shall go forth from in the future. This Gog, uh, a descendant of Og, I believe, but the Bible says specifically that he shall come from Al-Mazil, Iraq, ancient Nineveh, Mosul, Iraq, Al-Mazil, Gog of Magog, Mazil. And that's not me guessing. That's not my interpretation. The Bible gets very specific in Nahum chapter 1. And Nahum 1 is all about the uh, seventh bowl battle of the great day of God Almighty when Jesus renders his fiery vengeance on all who have the mark of the beast, all who come against Israel and the holy city and the holy people and the, the saints, the, the ones who have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, will come from Mosul, Iraq. And I don't say that because of ISIS. I say that because Nahum chapter 1, which is seventh bull, our future, says that he will come. That wicked counselor that shall arise shall come from Mosul. So isn't it interesting that here Og is one of the forefathers, I believe, of Gog from Al-Mazil. I don't think just because I, that Nahum 1 mentions Nineveh that that says that Russia is not in the picture. Oh no, Russia and Turkey and Iran, no. They're most likely part of this Assyrian alliance that shall help and guard the children of Lot. But that's interesting. The other king was all king of Bashan and his territory, who was of the remnant of the giants. Now, is Gog from Mosul, Iraq, the future final Antichrist, going to be tall? I don't know, but it wouldn't surprise me if he was. But just because you're tall doesn't mean you are of the remnant of, of the giants mentioned here, who are descendants of somebody called the sons of God. We're going to find out who the Bible means in this lesson. Uh, but anyways, all king of Bashan, uh, who was of the remnant of the giants, who dwelt at Ashtaroth and Edra, Edri, or Edrai. Where's that at? Well, let's go back to our Old Testament map. Here's Bashan, Og of Bashan, and then over in here would be Nineveh, Mosul, Iraq. The final Antichrist shall go forth from Mosul, Al-Mazil. That's Gog, who may not be called Gog. But the Bible's letting you know he is a descendant of the giants, just like Og. And Og is probably in his bloodline. But here's Ashtaroth, and here's Edri, Edrai. Okay, so it's this area here. Southeast, Golan Heights, Jordan, this area. In the uh, tribe of Manasseh. Uh, lived in this land for quite a while. Hallelujah. Okay, back to our giants search. Okay, we left off here. Um, Joshua 13, verse 12. All the kingdom of Og in Bashan, who reigned in Ashtaroth and Edrai, who remained of the remnant of the giants, for Moses had defeated and cast out these. All right, we know it was by the hand of the Lord. Isn't it interesting that Father is wanting to remove on both sides of the Sea of Galilee, on both sides of the Jordan River, these descendants of the sons of God, who were known as the giants. Interesting. Anything to do with the falling angels? Let's find out. Joshua 17, verse 15. 
So Joshua answered them, If you are a great people, then go up to the forest country and clear a place for yourself there in the land of the per Perizzites and the giants, since the mountains of Ephraim are too confined for you, if you are a great people. Yeah, go ahead and try to get out the giants. 2 Samuel 21, verse 15 when the Philistines were at war with Israel, David and his servants with him went down and fought against the Philistines, and David grew faint. Philistines' giants were destroyed. Second Samuel. First Chronicles 20, verse 4. Now it happened afterward that war broke out at Gezer with the Philistines, at which time Sebekai the Hushathite killed Zippai who was one of the sons of the giant, and they were subdued. So those descendants were in the land for quite some time. So that's using giants as a um, key word to search for. Okay, so what this has done so far in this lesson is there's no doubt that giants that made humans seem like grasshoppers, were prevalent in, in the Holy Land. And what else do we know? We know that there, someone known as the sons of God uh, was the f original father or fathers of this line of people, giants, men of renown, men that stories were told of, often of. So let's continue our study to find out who these sons of God are. What do we got here? Uh, I'll tell you what, I want to go to Job chapter 1, verse 6. I want to go to Job chapter 1, verse 6. Book of Job. Now we were, uh, we found something interesting in Genesis chapter 6. Now let's read the first 12 verses of chapter 1 in the book of Job. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. And seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. Okay, so in the land of Uz is known as the people of the East. Very interesting. And his sons would go and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day, and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So it was, when the days of feasting had run their course, that Job would send and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed in their hearts. Thus Job did regularly trying to stand in the gap, if you will, to make an atonement and to stop Father's wrath to come upon his family. Now let's keep reading. Satan attacks Job's character. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. So the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. So is this in heaven or on earth? Maybe that will help give us a clue to who the sons of God are. And he's letting you know that wherever this is occurring, it's not the earth because of the way that this is said. He answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. But he's before the Lord at the throne room of God. 
but the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Who are the sons of God? And they're bringing themselves, appearing before the throne in the throne room of God. Are these the dead souls? Uh, or are these angels? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, and that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, who, one who fears God and shuns evil? So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. All right, this is what Satan is saying about Job before the Lord at the throne room of God at the time the sons of God came to present themselves before the throne. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay your hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Okay. Let's continue our study, but it sure looks like we're talking about angels here. Now we were in Genesis 6 primarily when we looked at our first bunch of search results for the word giants. Genesis chapter 6, here we are in Job 1, verse 6. Another 6. Interesting. I believe this is before the throne room of God, and this is Satan and the angels coming to present themselves before the Lord. That's what I believe. Let's keep reading. Let's go to the book of Jude. All right, let's read the first six verses of Jude. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. See that? Deny our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ denying that he is one with Father, and he is God. He's a member of the Trinity. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under the darkness for the judgment of the great day, as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So who are these angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode? And it has to do with the subject of immoral sex acts. Okay? I believe, brothers and sisters, that these are those sons of God that we read about in Genesis 6 and Job 1, verse 6. And here we are in Jude verse 6 
And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day when Jesus appears. In power and great glory, when the great trumpet blown with the great sound to start the great day of the battle of God Almighty. That's judgment day. Day of reward and the day of punishment. That's when these angels will suffer the vengeance of eternal fire. These angels who do not keep their proper domain had sex with the daughters of men, brothers and sisters, and produced mortal giants. Not half immortal and half mortal. They were mortal. Unlike their fathers, the fallen angels, they were mortal, but they were tall, and they were strong, and they can kill many men. It would take many men to slay them, but they were mortal. They were born of woman. So when you watch YouTube videos and people are talking about these giants descending from the fallen angels, that is correct. Now, people won't just stop there. They'll take it and they'll make up all kinds of strange stories and lies about the future. Uh, many of them will. So I'm not saying everything that they have. And then they'll go to books that are uh, supposedly uh, similar to uh, biblical authors. But it's not the Holy Bible. Stay away from the other scriptures that aren't in the Holy Bible. Stay away from them, brothers and sisters. You don't even know the Holy, Holy Bible well enough. So why in the world would you want to leave the Holy Bible and go try to, to read other ancient books? Don't do it. Stay with what's in the Bible. Learn the Bible first. And I, if you live to be 100, you won't finish learning the Bible. I hope you get my point. But people who say that the fallen angels at least... At one time, many of them, now maybe not all of them, many of them or a few of them had sex with human women. They looked like men. They looked like very good looking men. And the Bible talks about uh, the um, ancient Assyrians and how the daughters of Israel would whore after these good-looking men of Assyria. And now we see not all men of Assyria had fallen angels as their original seed line, but many of them did. And Israeli women, okay, fell for their good looks and their charm. And were taken, many of them taken as wives. And then they started, uh, and then, of course, also, many of the Assyrian women were taken as wives to the, Jeru uh, to the Israeli men. And then next thing you know, Israel has forgotten about their father, their Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and then they start uh, worshiping false gods, false idols, making carved images to false gods. So they got lured away by the temptations of this, some of them, actually the seed line of the fallen angels. But isn't it interesting that we were in Genesis 6, Job 1, verse 6, and the sixth verse in Jude. Three sixes, talking about this fallen angel's seed line. Is that what sons of God means? Well, let's go to Luke 20 to get some more understanding. I think some of you are doubting still. Let's look at verses 27 through 39 of Luke chapter 20. 27 through 39. Let's start right here. The Sadducees, what about the resurrection? So brothers and sisters, I hope that you've, well I should say this, thank you for staying with me up to this point because your, your, your doubt is going to be cured 
Um, you're going to come to full understanding of what is meant by giants and sons of God. Uh, thank you for staying for the second half, if you will, of this lesson. You'll be blessed by it. Let's read what we're told in Luke chapter 20. Then some of the Sadducees, who deny that there is a resurrection, came to him, Jesus, and asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother dies having a wife, and he dies without children, his brother should take his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers, and the first took a wife and died without a children, and the second took her as wife, and he died childless. And the third took her, and in like manner the seven also, and they left no children and died. Last of all, the woman died also. Therefore in the resurrection, whose wife does she become? For all seven have had her as wife. Jesus answered and said to them, The sons of this age marry and are given in marriage. Okay, This current age that you and I live in right now. But those who are counted worthy to obtain that age, what age? The age that we're in now? No, the next age called the millennium. Okay, but we're not talking about the man of dust people who will uh, be alive during the millennium. This is talking about the glorified or those who shall be glorified and live in the age of the millennium in their glorified body. Let's keep reading. But those who are counted worthy to obtain to attain that age and the resurrection from the dead, counted worthy to attain the resurrection from the dead during the millennium, or the start of the millennium, neither marry nor are given in marriage. It's describing your glorified body, brothers and sisters. Nor can they die anymore. Okay, so if you're counted worthy to attain the resurrection from the dead, you can't die anymore. You become immortal. For they are equal to angels and are sons of God. What does this mean? This means that there are two categories of the sons of God. If you are a son of man, small s, you are a human. You are mortal. If you are a son of God, you are equal to angels and you are immortal. Son of man versus son of God. So the angels are sons of God, and when Jesus appears, those who are resurrected are called the sons of the resurrection. That's one of the other categories of the sons of God. So the sons of God are angels, and the sons of God are the sons of the resurrection. But that hasn't happened yet. That'll happen when Jesus appears on the last day of the age at the pouring of the seventh bowl during the worst earthquake of all time when the earth cast out its dead and the graves open and the exceedingly great army stands on its feet. Hallelujah. But even Moses showed in the burning bush passage that the dead are raised when he called the Lord the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. For he is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for all live to him. Hallelujah. So, we have our answer, brothers and sisters, about that question. The sons of God are either the angels or the sons of the resurrection, which hasn't happened yet. That'll happen on the last day of the age. When we get our new, immortal, glorified body that's as much physical as it is spiritual, but you are definitely immortal. And you will serve Jesus and Father for eternity. But the millennial period will last a thousand years. The host of heaven need to see what it's like on earth when Jesus is in charge for a thousand years and everything becomes the Garden of Eden. It'll be beautiful. True peace. Hallelujah. But we have our answer. So since the sons of the resurrection has not occurred yet, 
Then it's the other category, which are the angels, what is meant by the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6. Mating with daughters of men and bearing children. Not bearing something immortal, not bearing something that's uh, immortal and mortal. No, they're just very large human children. There's your answer, brothers and sisters. Everything we've read up till now has alluded to this, and then this was the clincher. This, this, this tipped the scale. If you were sitting on the fence, still not sure what was meant by sons of God in Genesis 6, Luke 20 gives you your answer. Hallelujah. Where else do we want to go in this study? Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2. Let's read Let's see Let's read verse 4 For if God did not spare the angels who sinned hint hint but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world but saved Noah, one of the eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly, and delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked, Okay, then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. So you can finish reading 2 Peter 2. But I wanted you to see this. This is what he's talking about here. The angels who have sinned. Okay, they left their own abode. Remember reading that? Alright. They lured the daughters of men into their bed took them as for wives and wanted to see what it was like spending some time living on earth acting as human men and they thought the daughters of men were beautiful and they wanted to have them for themselves why should men be the only ones who get to have these gorgeous daughters of men so they wanted to play that game for a while and look what it's cost them for eternity. That's the one-third of the angels who side with Satan in the coup against the Lord, in the coup against Jesus. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12 and read the first six verses. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. This is talking about the stars of heaven being the sons of God, the angels, a third of them. And the dragon stood, and they follow the commands of Lucifer, Leviathan, the dragon. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was able to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. You want to know where that's at? That's who, let's see, uh, Isaiah chapter 16, verses 1 through 5. That is the Wadi Mujib passages of the fords of the Arnon River. And the, uh, the daughters of Jordan, the Christian daughters of Jordan, will be prepared and will feed the uh, daughters of Zion who flee Judea, just what Jesus is talking about in Matthew 24, 
when the abomination of desolation of Daniel chapter 11 verse 29 through 35 takes place, those who watch will know to quickly flee to the Wadi Mujib. You'll see it on Google Earth and there's lots of pictures uploaded to Google Earth and it is beautiful. W-A-D-I space M-U-J-I-B. Fords of the Arnon, Wadi Mujib. That is Isaiah 16 verses 1 through 5. But the stars of heaven, I wanted you to see the total of fallen angels that rebelled and took part in the coup against Jesus. Who follow the dragon, Lucifer, Leviathan, that fleeing serpent, Satan, the devil. One third of all the billions of angels. Now how many of them actually took daughters of men as wives, I have no idea. Like in the days of Noah, let's check out Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. Starting with verse 36, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, what is that talking about? Well, in the days of Noah, what did Father do? He destroyed all flesh except for eight people who were aboard the ark. What was Father trying to do? He was trying to get rid of this fallen angel seed, which had added dramatically to the sins of men as well as the way that all flesh acted evil it really corrupted the seed the good seed here you have all this fallen angel DNA it's a, it's, it's the synagogue of Satan it's the seed of Satan it's like the seed in Satan's seed bag all right his angels his fallen angels who rebelled and revolted and resisted Almighty God, the Holy One of Israel, and still are upset and want to make war with the, uh, um, the followers of Jesus Christ today. The saints who have their name written in the book of life of the Lamb and who have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And they will be turned loose on earth for 42 months, says Revelation 13, during the hour of trial mark of the beast test. But like in the days of Noah, just before Jesus comes back will be the overflowing scourge of Isaiah 28. And Father will once again be wiping out the seed line of Satan and his fallen angels. And all of these millions of people, especially in the Middle East, are going to be taking the mark of the beast who will go forth from Mosul, Iraq, says Nahum chapter 1. And the 666, whatever that means, the number of his name, whatever that means, the 666 seed line will be marked for destruction. And they'll be used to chastise Israel. All right, and we'll, if we don't flee in time, we're going to get caught up in this and have to give a testimony and make Father and Jesus very proud of us. And many of us will have to give our lives for our testimony. All right, but that's what's meant by like in the days of Noah, it'll happen again. Now, is he going to flood the entire earth again? No, but the latter rain is part of this overflowing scourge storm that you read about in Isaiah chapters 24 through 30, especially Isaiah 28. Hallelujah. And that's what was alluded to in 1 Kings 18 when Elijah had that showdown with the 450 prophets of Baal and poured the four water pots three times that overflowed the hiding places represented by the trenches. Okay, that's of Jesus and Father beginning to wipe out this seed line, this seed line that offends and must be cast out and bundled for burning. Hallelujah.
So, what does this mean? If the sons of God, angels, had sex with the daughters of men prior to the flood, but only eight people survived the flood, right? Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives. So if these eight people came through, that, and, if this, and if that means that the seed line of the fallen angels are on the earth today, then that means that one of his three sons or more has had the, uh, could have been dormant, but they had the seed of Satan in them. And, and it came through the flood. Now, did that surprise Father? Nothing surprises Father. He has his reasons. Did he know that we were going to have this need for a sifting 2,000 years after Jesus walked the earth? Of course, Father knew that. Does Father know that we have to have another final sifting at the end of the millennium when, when Gog attacks Israel again, his descendants? Yes. So Father knows he's not completely wiping out this seed line. He knew he wouldn't completely wipe this seed line out in the great flood during the days of Noah. He knows he's not going to completely wipe it out at the return of Jesus Christ, overflowing scourge, four water pots poured three times. Read Isaiah 28, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's also called the overwhelming flood. Everyone must come up out of their bunkers to be judged and to be ashamed and to see the face of him who sits on the throne. Hallelujah. And to be forced to watch the wedding before you're destroyed. So, Father is not surprised. Okay, He understands that this seed line. And why does Father permit it? Well, you can't have light unless you have darkness too. Light doesn't look bright unless it's compared to darkness. All right. So Father knows what he's doing. But this lesson is all about that seed line. And who are the sons of God? Who are the giants? The offspring. Now, what about today? 2017. Are only tall people ones who have this seed line of the synagogue of Satan? No. Do all tall people... Uh, have this seed? No. Just because you're tall does not mean that you're a descendant of the giants who were the children of the fallen angels. No. It's interesting. Here you see Jesus with the title of Son of Man, but the S is capitalized. Do you see that? Right? Son of God, you know, those are the angels or the sons of the resurrection who will be like angels. But the Son of Man was born of woman, okay? But he wasn't one of the giants. He's the Son of Man. In fact, he may not have been very tall. We'll find out when we meet him. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh and made alive by the Spirit, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were disobedient, when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. There is also an antitype which now saves us, baptism. Okay, but basically I brought you here just... So we can talk a little bit about the days of Noah. But we've actually already did that. So I'll let this, this go. 1 Peter 3. Now let's go to Revelation 2, verse 9.
under the persecuted church, and to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich, and I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Hallelujah. And what you're going to see at the end of the age, brothers and sisters, during this seventh week of Daniel, second half, remember the Bible says that Satan and his angels will be cast to earth, possessing people who will be drawn to them. Actually, it's their own fallen angel descendants. They will be drawn to Satan. They will be drawn to this Gog from Mosul, Iraq, in an image, and they'll be bowing to this image in Baghdad so many times a day and taking his mark. You know, they're being drawn to their father. They are the enemies. They are our enemies of the Holy One of Israel, of Jesus Christ, his Son, the only begotten Son of God. And all who follow him, they're going to make war against us for 42 months trying to get as many as they can to fall away from the faith and take the mark. This showdown is about to go down, brothers and sisters. This time of testing. Okay, you read about it uh, under the faithful church. The hour of trial mark of the beast test. You also see it in Daniel 11, verse 39. Advancement and acknowledgement of the beast kingdom by marking. You see in Zechariah 5, this basket of wit wickedness that will be set up in Baghdad, the land of Shinar. This image that shall be transported to Baghdad. Uh, let's end this lesson, brothers and sisters, with John chapter 8, verse 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. We'll start with 42 and read through 47. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Yes, the angels are the sons of God. But one third of them, even though they were sons of God, rebelled. And the children produced by those fallen angels are called the synagogue of Satan and the devil, or the fallen angels who support the devil, who follow the devil, are their fathers. He who is of God hears God's words, therefore you do not hear, because you are not of God. In other words, you're not a seed cast by Jesus, whose seed fell on good ground, and came to the truth and the uh, understanding of who Jesus is. Hallelujah! Well, brothers and sisters, I hope this has been an interesting lesson for you. Even though I might sound a little tired and monotone today, uh, I hope you learned a lot. I did in this study, and I hope you found it interesting that we're talking about primarily Genesis 6, Job 1, verse 6, and Jude 1, verse 6. Of course, we got a lot of information out of Luke 20 as well. Um... And John chapter 8 really sums it up. I hope you don't have any questions about what's about to go down on planet Earth. This is going to be a time of testing. And it's going to be a time to find out who are the descendants of the devil. This fallen seed. 
however you want to call it. Um, I'm not someone who pushes this. Um, you, If you've seen many of my 240 videos, you realize this is not a subject I talk a lot about. Because people tend to go astray when they cover this topic. So I didn't want to go too crazy with it, but I wanted you to get the basics. And I wanted to find out for myself. Was it really fallen angels having, uh, marrying and having sex and bearing their wives, human wives, bearing their children called giants, the men of renown? And it's true. We've proved that in this lesson. Brothers and sisters, I can't wait to see you next time. God bless.